Good Morning Cybertron is a podcast intended for adults and is not suitable for those under the age of 18. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm Christy. I'm Scott. And I'm Amber. And we are the hosts of Old Timey Crimey, a true crime historical podcast. Everything we talk about is from 1950 and before. We talk about crimes you've heard about, like the Radium Girls and the Lindbergh Baby, and some ones maybe you haven't heard about, like Hans Schmidt and my crime victim doppelganger, O.C. Sneed. We find out stuff about old crimes that you may not know, and you know what? We're even going to maybe solve a mystery or two. Hasn't happened yet. It could, I, though. We don't know. I, I want that to happen. Like, that would be awesome. New episodes drop every Friday, and we're also currently releasing uh, from behind the Patreon wall our quarantine bonus mini episodes on Monday, so there is plenty to binge. Yay, coronavirus! <laughs> so come join us talking about really old true crime. Because the good old days weren't that good. I'm Simon Furman, and you're listening to Good Morning Cybertron. Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, Cybertron! Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Good Morning Cybertron. Come, love us. Give us hugs. Smush your meaty man tits up against our chest. We're here to take care of you and love you. With us today, it's our friends from up north, Thomas. Hello. And Artem. Hello. From a completely different north on the other side of the world. It's Olsen! Hello! Oh, God, I love that little hello. Love that little hello. hello. Oh, my God. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, my God. And all the way from sunny, sunny California, it's Xavier. Take off your pants. Oh, my God. Oh, my too God. Late. It's too late. Done. <laughs> Done. Well, I Olsen... Holson has an excuse. He's in another time zone, so therefore, when I said it, he was already in the future and was able to do it. All of our female listeners are pregnant now. Fantastic. Which means nobody is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody you said something. This round law of averages. <laughs> Someone said something just like that in the four in the forty k page on Facebook. They were like, "And I ran into this this painter with a fully painted army. And then suddenly, I was pregnant. And I was like." I'm pretty sure that this hobby serves as a contraceptive. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, uh, a million times zero is still zero. <laughs> I have got something I want to show you guys this week. Uh, everybody here has already seen it anyway, but I, I want to show the listeners. It's a little reinforcement from Cybertron, but it's coming in early. Oh, it's Bob. Or Doc. Scott. It's Doc. Scott. Yes. What, Madman? did you get that from oh my god i got it from right up here baby right up here what? i went on wait TV. Scott. yes hold on hold on mm -hmm. are you saying this doc is a tulpa yeah oh, kind of it kind of is if you really stop and think about it we have we have this little head it is articulated <laughs> you can pop it off if you want you can print multiple heads to get different facial expressions these arms right here not only are they articulated they pop off and they are siege effect compatible five millimeters right there and i'll tell you what if you want this yeah. if you want this you've got two options and both of them are pretty fucking sweet you can either go to thingiverse to doll surprise toys it's a real thing right you can download the files for free 
everything doll surprise does if you have a 3d printer guess what it's going to be available free to you scott i don't have a 3d printer i hear you saying it don't worry we got you covered because you can head on over to doll surprise toys on shapeways and it is a little pricey shapeways is a little pricey but for forty dollars and fifty two cents you can have them print out your very own dock and mail it to you i would strongly suggest just going and getting the 3d printer that's me because for the price of uh let's see here uh six of these docks you can have a really nice 3d printer <laughs> yes yes get yourself an elegy mars get yourself a creality ender 3 you can have a really nice 3D printer. And then if you want to print out like Star Ears Geo or the G2 Seeker Missile Launchers, you can go over to our Thingiverse page and you can get them for free. So check that out. Doll Surprise Toys. It's a real thing. Thomas, you were going to say. Oh, I, I was just going to mention that I, I, I see seen that you, uh, you painted his face rather nicely as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. His... his uh, his little emotive eyes there are looking pretty good. Now, pretty soon, uh, what I'm going to do is... Right there is the bottom of him. Right there is the bottom of him. And I was thinking, oh, you know what? I could just, like, hollow this out and then kind of do a thing. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, cr like, absolutely hollow this out. Instead of having a circle, have it either a square or a pentagon. Looking at it, I'm kind of thinking square. And then the top of the peg will be a square as well, so that you can pop this out and switch it around. And then I will have like four different faces. I'll have like the standard face, a happy face, a surprise face, and an angry face for Doc. Uh, that's oh. that's in the future. <laughs> kind of doing like mm. a uh, a rough manny faces thing, but there, um, uh, uh, almost like a masterpiece. Make... Stuff. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Holson. You gotta have a face with the expression "doll surprise." <laughs> That's kind of already there. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a reason yeah. I did that face. Huh? Yeah. The way the way you described it kind of reminded me of the way how they're doing the masterpiece faces. You know, a little bit, a little, a bit. little bit like that, kind of a like few... the, the low tech <clears throat> version of that. Yeah. <clears throat> but question? Yes. Can we get weaponizer dog? Well, I guess he already kind of is because everything's put together with him on like five millimeter pegs. And I was actually, I was kind of like accidentally looking at this the other day because I was, I was looking at the file and kind of getting it ready for Shapeways. And I was looking at this and I, I, uh, I go to Yeji. That's where I look at all the things. And whenever this, whenever my own design showed up on Yeji, I went, the first thing out of my mind was, well, that's a strange looking Omega Supreme arm. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, that's not an Omega Supreme arm. That's your own fucking design, Scott. So not my design. It's, 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 it's my creation. IDW designed Doc. And I'm not taking credit for the creation of Doc. It's a... Uh, it's Isn't all kind of weird when you when you loop full around and go on. God, that looks familiar. That coloring, that shape, it really that does. signature that says "Doll Surprise." It really does. It, it's fantastic. So I love my Doll Surprise. I love my Doll Surprise brand doc. And <laughs> honest, I like it. I like it. I like that you once a week have something new to show, which is very impressive, sir. Well. It's going to be, for the next couple of weeks, it's going to be uh, just small things. It's going to be small things. It's going to be like a gun, uh, of course. maybe a cannon or something. But I am working on something big for the future. I am uh, currently working on a kit to change uh, so you can customize Siege Impactor into IDW Turmoil. Ooh, yes, you did mention that. Yes. I like that. Yeah, so that is what's the the next big thing coming from Doll Surprise Toys. And once Fall again, up. once again, yes. if you have that 3D printer, it's going to be available to you for free. Forever and always, I have, it'll be on Thingiverse. I have a follow-up because the design seems somewhat strikingly similar. Okay. Can we get maybe from the Fantastic Four a Rob the Robot? I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, because uh, I was looking at like I was looking at him, and whenever you first 
like look at Doc, the first thing that comes to you is R two D two. But I went, mm-hmm. no, that's fucking. They didn't want children setting them on themselves on fire to be the human <laughs> torch in the eighties. So the Fantastic Four's fourth member was a robot, and I was kind of thinking eh, it'd be kind of neat to do that. He actually I... kind of reminds me of them of them little uh, those little guys from the Black Hole movie. Yes, remember the guys Vincent and yeah. uh, Vincent and Old Bob. Yes. You know, you know what? I, I see some great opportunity for cross promotion because if you're talking about a robot that is meant to stop children from setting themselves on fire and the design is originally coming from a Transformers comic, why don't we do Rob the Fallen, the Dark One? A black version. <laughs> shattered Shattered Doc. Shattered Doc, <laughs> shattered who Doc. has his own fire backdrop. <laughs> shattered Doc. Shattered. I've, I've got enough test print parts here. That I could probably assemble another another dock, so I could do shattered glass dock. You heard it here first from uh, Dull Surprise Inc. and uh, Good Morning Cybertron. Shattered glass dock coming <laughs> soon. Ellipses? Question <laughs> mark. Now, do us a favor. Uh, head on over to Amazon, buy our booklet, build a, building a massive Transformers collection. Two ninety nine. Hell, if you've got Kindle Unlimited, fuck it, it's free. Uh, if you'd like to. Come on over. Support us on Patreon. We are GMC Entertainment on Patreon. If you got like a dollar or two, like we're never going to charge you to do for the main show. Never, ever, ever. And we love this. Uh, we love this because, quite honestly, we love each other, and we love Transformers as well. So the main show is, is always going to be free, but if you're kind of sitting back going like, hey, I'd like a little bit more. I'd like to see these guys interacting on a, in a different way. You're going to be able to view our pre-show. It's like a 20-minute little thing of just us chilling around, talking about talking about Transformers and just what's going on in our lives. Uh, so head on over to Patreon. Help us out there. And a huge thank you going out to our Patreon supporters. No no lie. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you'd I like mean, the pre-show is great. You, you might find out, finally, which one of us has the genital warts. It's me. Uh, <laughs> damn it! I mean, I take that back. I just... <laughs> Edit, 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 edit that out. Edit. Uh, and head on over to something that I'm particularly proud of, the Junk Transformers Buy, Sell, and Trade. My God, there, there's just so much over there, and we're keeping so many toys on the shelves. Uh, I'm going to be putting some stuff up there pretty soon, hopefully helping somebody else uh, have their collection be very, very complete. Thank you so very much to everybody. Go on there, save your toys, get them back on the shelves, get them complete. Speaking of toys on the shelves, big thank you going out to our longtime sponsor. Oh, it's SirToys.com. Sir Woo-hoo. Toys. Oh my God. I got to share the screen with my friends over here. Look at this son of a bitch bullshit awesomeness. <laughs> look at this. I said, look at it. I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> it hurts. a lot of new stuff of particular interest I kind Ooh. of I kind of zoned out on the prime stuff and I, I definitely want to go back and get some of the Transformers prime stuff hopefully one day they'll have a knockoff breakdown they'll have like knockoff vehicons air and land honestly I oh, feel like God, if you made yeah. Voyager vehicons you could fucking it's like printing which money which version doesn't matter. I mean, it's their knockoffs. We're going to get a fucking rainbow of Viacons. It's true. <laughs> Good. Air exactly. Vicon, but he's, yeah, Air Viacon, but he's got, like, turbines because he's actually under the sea Viacon. It's just like, yeah, close it up. He's flying now. Mm-hmm. No, but I remember they had that uh, the first version and the second version of Viacon, and then the Air one afterwards. Yeah. Doesn't weren't matter. We talking to, weren't we talking about... Uh... You know, somebody potentially knocking those off, it seemed like the most obvious thing in the world to do. Right, right. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but I love this because now it seems like you go so far out from a series and you think, well, they're never going to knock off those. This week, this week, they knocked off the Weaponizer Optimus Prime. Who <laughs> delayed? Look at him. And they knocked off the Weaponizer Bumblebee. And they're fucking huge. Jesus. Yeah. I can see that. That's <laughs> Rubs, what happened to you? <clears throat> Damn. They're like they're like the size of Jetfire. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> this is one of those weird instances where Bumblebee came down with a horrendous case of mass shifting. 
I'd like to see like the the Transformers Prime series, and everything stays the same except these two are the that size in the <laughs> series. Beep boop beep squeak. <laughs> And, and the dust pulls from Bumblebee's voice box rattles like continents and shakes the ocean and makes the moon drift out of orbit. Like Make uh, the poor Unicron look up, look up at Bumble, you go, what the hell? Instead that, of so in, instead of beeping, it's just a bunch of really deep reverb. And don't forget, <laughs> like the Michael Bay, boom! It's like a couple of the beeps. <laughs> oh man, Cosmos could do. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind soundtrack. I would fucking love to see like Ultra Magnus this size. Oh, that'd be. Oh awesome. yeah. Yeah. He does need Damn. to be able to ca car carry a bunch of bots, so that does make absolute sense. Mm -hmm. Did they make a Did they make a Predaking that size? I can't remember. There, there. The main line had a pretty massive Predaking, but there were some knockoff Predakings that were. Uh, Absolutely fucking bonkers. There was one that transformed into a horse, I think. <laughs> um, what? Looking through the Predaking stuff here. Yeah, you know, there it is. Pony Predaking. The, uh, the great predator yeah. of the grass plains. Yup. <laughs> there is Pony Predaking. My little Predaking, my little Predaking. Ooh, <laughs> la, la, la. This happened. What the, I, I don't understand. <laughs> You're not meant to, I don't think. Nope. If you've ever thought, maybe we are living in a simulation, here you go. The answer is yes, <laughs> because this happened. There's a, there's a fracture in the matrix. There's no way that this was a fucking accident. <laughs> it's so good at being bad. This was not an accident. It was an experiment of some sort, though. Oh, Not even on Otto Kellis. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We had we had him in blue, which, honest to God, blue makes him look like a great fucking cryo tech. Oh, it Actually, does yes. too. Yeah. Not oh, bad. I can see that. But yeah. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was like a knockoff Predaking that was. I'm just going to type in Predaking Prime, and see what happens here. I think, I think there was. One there. Yeah, I think there was one that was fucking massive, if I'm not mistaken. Predaking Prime. I'm hoping this doesn't bring up every Optimus Prime and Predaking. No <laughs> items found. Oh. So we're just going to have to go Predaking on this one and go through here. Let's see here. MMC Predaking. Uh, Pony Predaking. Oh. Predaking TF Prime Light Blue. And we'll go next here. And there's an oversized Predaking that has Optimus Prime's face. I like that purple one. He's so majestic. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Wow. These are these are something special, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah, there is one there. Ooh, that's a different Optimus Prime. <laughs> oh, yeah, this one? That one. Do you see that? Let's take a yeah. look at this. Oh my god, it looks like they've gone no, to Mardi no. Gras. <laughs> I was thinking like kinda like, you know, Carnival Prize Prime. Carnival Prize <laughs> fucking Waterhead Baby Prime. <laughs> it's, it's Dad says it's my turn to use the Xbox. Shut up, you freak! Go cry yeah, yourself to sleep on an oversized pillow. <laughs> you were saying Holson, I'm sorry. Yeah, this looks like Something like a, out of a Brazilian carnival. Like. Is that Ultraman? That's fucking Ultraman Predaking. <laughs> what? That's right. And his and and the, and the dragon head looks like a Digimon head or something. Yep. I thought it looked more like Thundertron, but I guess Digimon makes sense. Now it almost yeah. looks like uh, that Evangelion, one of those. Yeah, I can oh, see that. Uh, unit two when it. Uh, shifts into beast mode, which is yes, an actual thing that they said in the movies, the reboots. It's a beast. Fucking yeah. fire guts Predaking. Wow. That's actually a hot color scheme. Like, literally, figuratively, that looks really good. That does. That honest yeah. to fucking does. Yeah. Uh, fuck. If you want any of this weirdness, 
and tons more weirdness and just some straight up fucking awesome stuff. Do us a favor. I mean, seriously, look at this Megatron they're selling. Oh. Yeah. However, my eye went to that Mirage. Uh, the Mirage? Let's see here. The Iron Factory Mirage. Oh, it's an Iron Factory figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Do us a favor. If you'd like to buy anything on Sir Toys, and believe me, even if you hate us, support Sir Toys. They're an amazing resource. But if you want to help out the show, head on over to the show description underneath this video or underneath the podcast, wherever you're downloading it. Click on the link, www.sirtoys.com slash question mark A equals 16. Yes, I have it memorized. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, <laughs> where, is my, where is my infinite Teslas that I was promised? God damn it. Um, click on that. You get what you want. You don't pay a penny more. We get a little something something on the side. Paul gets business. Everybody wins. Thank you once again, sirtoys.com. And you can find just the most, like, I mean, even if you're not interested in, in a knockoff per se, you can find some of the craziest oddities there that you can't find anywhere else. Honest to God, it's just fun sometimes <laughs> to sit back and scroll through the website and go, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. And they're all cheap. So it's like, I, I, I kind of want that and you, you can get it. Yeah. That's, Usually in more than one size. I don't understand. Why Why is this Trypticon turning into a sea snail? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. must have something to do with that outbreak of sea snails. Exactly. No, my, maybe not. We got the fucking image of the box art of, of Scorponok. Oh, Ooh, it's beautiful. I've seen this, and he looks like an Adonis. Oh, my God. He's got that bodybuilder pose. And he's fucking crushing Optimus Prime in his claw. And there's this the arc. Is, there's I know, this is arc. so good. This this is like that strut Karens get when they have their little dog in their hand. And they're like, we're going to go see the manager. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Karen form. I mean, his helmet hair kind of has that Karen swoosh. It really does. It does. <laughs> I keep thinking that we're eventually going to see the arc in toy form. Oh God, an updated arc! Right there, it is. Yeah, like yeah, we've seen the not... arc mm. on every single box. It's it is iconic, but you're right. There is like a lot of mentions and showing of the. It's kind of like that thing where it's just like, is this box art or is this a storyline? Because you're you're seeing quite a bit of revealing things now. Right. Like characters in the background, they're not there just for show. Those are is that Cliff Jumper in the very front? Um let's see here. I know somebody thought it was I know somebody thought it was Bumblebee. Yeah. No so, door wings though. It makes me think Cliff Jumper. Right. Yeah. You know, even even if that arc, like if they have, if they add it to the to the line, even if it doesn't turn out to have a robot mode, I would love to just have a big arc thing that can turn into a huge playset for all of the battle masters <laughs> and micro masters, just something like that. Yeah, I oh, yeah. I'm enjoying. Sorry to delve back into this fiery explosion, but you see way in the back that one bot getting tossed. Can you can you practically hear the Wilhelm scream from here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know who they think did the web uh, the Wilhelm scream? Who? Sheb Woolley, the same guy that sung Purple People Eater. The the prevailing theory is that he's the one behind the Wilhelm scream. Interesting. How did he Why get is it Why was it called the Wilhelm scream too? Because uh, I think the character that actually actually gets shot is named Wilhelm the first time it's ever used. Oh, okay, that makes sense. It, it was a western, and he gets an arrow to the fucking chest. Not the knee? Hold on. Not the I've been knee. told arrows go to the knee. Not, not whenever it's Wilhelm, right to the fucking chest. Can you imagine if they realized that someone had a copyright for that? And got oh, a residual fuck. for every time it's used? Oh, hey, you know what? There's been far, far worse attempts to copyright other shit, like the whole SCP archive of horror stories in Russia 
and the smiley face badge in Italy. So, you know, there's some scumbags out there. I'm pretty sure if Wilhelm Scream wasn't synonymous with Star Wars and now Star Wars synonymous with Disney, someone would be going, uh, that shit's mine. Um, Listen to this. Ah, see, I'm the Wilhelm. Ah, pay me. Yeah. Ah! I wonder if I wonder if they're like if like Disney owns the Wilhelm scream or if it's like you know let's or find if, out or if it's or if it's public access or something. The... You know they tried to copyright "May the Fourth Be With You" on Twitter and that that fucking backfired in their face. So <laughs> yeah, I would nice. not put them past them to try to copyright the Wilhelm scream. Let's see here. Uh, let's see who recorded the Wilhelm scream. Sheb Woolley. Uh, the Wilhelm hey. Scream, most likely recorded by Sheb Woolley, first appeared in 1951 Florida Western distant drum scene in which a, an army soldier lets out a scream. Oh, when he's getting eaten by an alligator. Sorry. Oh, yikes. Oh, he took an alligator to the chest? Yeah. I, oh, I, hold I on, I've been told put... alligators to the knee. Yeah. Well, apparently it was alligator to the groin, the way, the way that sounded. Oh. Yeah. What movies so are the Wilhelm Scream in? All of them. <laughs> Any anything like fucking terms of endearment, you'll hear the Wilhelm scream. I think in in, in Lord Lord of the Rings, the uh, Battle of Helm's Deep. You know, it's it is impressive. Scott's right. The Wilhelm scream has showed up ninety nine percent of the time in every film, including some silent films. Yeah. And you go, what? Did... <laughs> well, the placard here, goes here. up. Wilhelm scream. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Is the Wilhelm scream protected by copyright? Let's find out here. Um, let's see here. Current Copyright currently attaches to any work. Uh, let's see. Nope. Uh, fuck it. We're just going to say the Wilhelm scream is owned by the world. Yeah, as it should be. Yeah. So it's public act. So it's public works like H.P. Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. Fuck. But, yeah. Every toy that... If I start doing sound chips for doll surprise toys, they're just all going to Wilhelm scream. <laughs> Some randomly, variant of it? Randomly. No buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Every character in uh, a script Scott's mm -hmm. makes from now on. Middle name, Wilhelm. Wilhelm. First name, Wilhelm. Last name, Smith. <laughs> Smith dash scream. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're Wilhelm fucking. Ask cream. <laughs> imagine you're fucking sleeping at night, and all of a sudden, just from your toy cabinet. Ah! <laughs> I can imagine you getting blocked by Wes Craven, going, uh, "Scott, I'm gonna need you to stop. I have a spinoff series of the Scream movie starting called the Wilhelm Scream." Wait a minute, you're dead, Wes. Go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> or am I? <laughs> yes, you are. Go back to bed. Ooh. <laughs> Stop it, Willie. Ne NECA, NECA should implement that uh, gimmick to all their figures. But <laughs> God damn, do they fall, fell over all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's great. I cannot fucking wait to have Scorponic in my collection. Oh, right, Scorponic. Yeah, that's right. We were talking about him. I mean, he's good looking enough as a box art. I'm, I'm kind of sweet on the idea that maybe... And I know it's not like super popular to do chase versions of things like this, but G1 style box art, like from last week's show where we saw the dude do the transforming tables. Yeah. Fuck. Like he could work miracles with the latest version of Earthrise Scorponok. Like his art style and this style of toy, just that on the box. I don't need like a different fig. I don't need any sort of new accessories. Just his art on the box. Well, honestly, I mean, this kind of harkens back to that G1 for me because the G1 art was like, it was poses the toys can do. And mm -hmm. it's going to be obvious. Scorponok is going to be able to do this pose. And it, it's just, it's great. There's fucking chaos everywhere. And, yeah. you know, there's beautiful, there's explosions, laser blasts. And even though, like, let's go back to one of my favorite lines. Cybertron. Cybertron was a fantastic line. One of my favorites. But really, the box art was just like, you know, the graphic design. And then, like, in the lower right-hand corner. Oh, there's, like, a little portrait of the character. 
No, give me shit like this. It's it's very very nice to see, like the dynamics back to it. Uh, I'm I'm kind of kind of missing tech specs though. Mm-hmm. The the red plastic, like they tried that shit with the Toys R Us exclusive Optimus. Is like, hey, you kids remember tech specs, right? All right, hear us out. What if the tech specs were weapons? And you're like, ooh, weapon tech specs. Wait a minute. <laughs> This Toys R Us manager looks a lot like Jeffrey Epstein. Aren't you supposed to be dead? <laughs> Ooh, me and Wes Craven. Ooh. I refuse to believe Wes Craven would hang out with Jeffrey Epstein in any way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, fuck. This is Remember beautiful. when Holson said that about us? He was like, I refuse to hang out with you. And we blackmailed him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Mm. Moving on. We've got a rumor that we're going to get an Earthrise Blue Streak. I like that. Yep. Yep. That's all it is, though, is just a rumor. Yep. So if you can't substantiate anything. Masterpiece right, cool. MP11 Ratchet. That's really just want to mention Blue Streak. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We do have we do have images now of Masterpiece MP11 Ratchet, 35 points of articulation, 61 step transformation, die cast parts, a movable mouth, missile, laser cannon, and a buzzsaw arm. Sexy, sexy. Very expensive, probably. Very nice. Probably. Yeah. Um, I can kind of appreciate it, though, I think. I he like how one they... of the... Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. I said he, he, he was one of the designs from the movies that I kind of liked. I, I think he's oh, yeah. a good design. I think it's really brilliant that they decided to fold his blaster into his arm, kind of like how they did it with Bumblebee for a number of years. I'm never going to get over the lime green. It's horrific. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a mustard baby puke green. <laughs> Bijan Ratchet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Artem, you've been awfully quiet. How do you say just horrific yellow lime mustard in uh, Japanese? You're Japanese, right? Uh, you. You are Japanese now. Son Artem of the Kame House School of Martial Arts. <laughs> oh, sh- <laughs> I've got I've got cousins that are Japanese. Nice. Have you yeah. tried? <laughs> no. Ratchetoru. <laughs> they're re- it's really funny. They they sound. I mean, those guys. Um, they're they're Japanese Canadians, and they sound they they have that very stereotypical Canadian speech, or at least or at least my mom's uncle, uh, Japanese uncle, does. He he sounds exactly like the stereotypical Canadian. I I want a mix of the two. <laughs> you dishonor our family, eh? <laughs> No need. I think I think the best representation <laughs> has to be uh, if you are Japanese Irish or Korean Irish from that Skittles commercial. <laughs> oh, that sounds like it would be very difficult to follow. That um... it's a it's a very good commercial of a Korean family that moved to Ireland and they are all ginger and they have very very thick Irish accents and. The point of the commercial is they love Skittles. I want to see a Japanese-Canadian deep wilderness family just so that they have tanuki skin caps. Like the <laughs> raccoon, tanuki skin the caps. Raccoon, the raccoon cap with the tail, but then two uh, giant testicles hanging down from beneath the tail. As soon as you said tanuki skin hat, I knew exactly where you were going. <laughs> yeah, you, if you don't say anything about the tanuki's testicles, you're doing a disservice to Japanese culture. Also, they might be time travelers. <laughs> yeah, apparently, and they and they like sake for some reason. Maple sake. Maple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maple flavored. So- I think you may have accidentally invented a hit. Oh my I'm, god! I'm gonna have to try that now. <laughs> Canadian <laughs> Crown Canadian delicious. Crown Whiskey presents maple sake. <laughs> Trademark also made a time. <laughs> it's like Japanese bourbon. 
<laughs> quick, Scott, put it up on Dull Surprise. Make the bottle real quick. <laughs> I might have to. I might have to make something for an uh, for a resin printer, <laughs> like a bottle of maple sake for Swerve's bar. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> did you ever? Did you? Did you ever watch the Tommy Lee Jones commercials in Japan for yes. Rainbow Mountain coffee? Yes. Rainbow Mountain. Rainbow yeah. Mountain. But you know, one thing is, my you... favorite is. <laughs> Go ahead, Artem. You have a favorite, Artem? No, I was going to say, you you, them? So the funny thing that you, you, you're actually talking about maple sake is that Japan is actually the biggest importer of Canadian maple syrup in the world. That's a oh, weird wow. That's a weird bit of trivia you have right at your fingertips, Artem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Well, I'm not you gonna, know. I'm not going to lie. That surprised me. <laughs> I am not going to I am not gonna lie. I am responsible for creating a, a, a product maple syrup flavor, which I don't think would ever existed until then. One of my family members actually works in a company that makes uh, hookah tobacco, you know, like for the the hookahs. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And last time when I ran into them, I actually brought them a bunch of uh, cans of maple syrup. So she, since she's the one who makes the flavor, she actually created maple flavored hookah tobacco. <laughs> oh, thank God. I thought you were going to say you're involved in some sort of illicit trade for like pussy no, for no, syrup. No, no, no. I was afraid yeah, it was gonna be. Very... T- I was afraid it was gonna be tobacco flavored maple syrup because that sounds fucking no, horrible. No, 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 no. And apparently it was very popular in Dubai for a while. <laughs> or you know what? If, if you were, if you were guilty of a, a sex trade, it wouldn't be pussy because the Japanese word for it is omanko. So you would be omanko for syrup, and that would be the code. <laughs> oh my god. A little bit of trivia for there. There is just like when you when you assault a Japanese woman, make sure you say omanko. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Fucking hell, we got images of a uh, sky warp and thundercracker from Earthrise. I uh, I strongly suggest everybody go get a Target red card right now, um, because these are apparently going up in, on Target's website. <laughs> Well, uh, they're already up on Target's website, but it's kind of like a, a sold-out thing. Apparently, July 2nd, they're going to go up there. Fucking do it. Go get yourself a Target red card right now. You get like a 10% discount on them. You'll get free shipping. And these toys look so good. What surprised me was uh, there somebody got these in hand it was a twitter user a japanese twitter user called smoking gray 7775 and he was nice enough to show the earthrise figures next to the siege figures next to the classic figures oh. these are are clean this time no battle damage yeah which is nice because we said that was going to be the next thing didn't we we did. We did. I don't like that sky warp head, though. Yeah, why is he perpetually screaming? Right? It's not like he has to listen to our show. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in for shit now, Warpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a couple spare siege heads. I may pop oh. that one off and put, put a siege head on there. God, no, it's a dull surprise face. Oh, no. That's a, pro- a dull su- proctology surprise face. Like, you could, it's not a Wilhelm screen, it's a Wilhelm murmur. You could just hear the uh, uh emanating hey. from the mouth. I think it looks like a very slow what? He looks like, he looks like a very square eastern island head. <laughs> like, if you, me, if you look at that face, like the close-up of that face... It, it, that's pain. He's that in is, pain. It's not anger. That's pain. That is yeah, a thing no actor can replicate. It is so horrific. I, I think that's the face that you get, like, you know, a fraction of a second after you step on a piece of Lego. No, no, no. This is the face I made whenever I read the Sioli uh, GoBots comic book. Oh? <laughs> you, you've not read the Sioli GoBots comic book? Negative. New, you Is you it need terrible. It's it's the same guy that that wrote uh, Transformers versus GI Joe. Oh, is oh, the crazy acid trip looking thing? <laughs> and he okay, hasn't can... he hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> and that is for the better. He turned Leader One into a despot. 
Oh. Oh. Leader one punched uh, Scooter so hard he went retarded. That's canon now in the comic book. <laughs> and I'm sorry, what's the downside to writing this off the wall? Spoilers. If nobody wants to be spoiled for the end of the GoBots comic book, Leader One and Psykill die. Night Ranger goes, no, we are going to create a new breed of hero. He goes, I've always wanted a son. So I'm going to create a new breed of hero. Somebody who optimizes everything that is good. And then he goes, we're going to take the best parts of Psykill and Leader One. And we're going to turn them into this new breed of robot. And they're fucking putting together Starscream. From leader one, from spare parts of leader one and Psykill. So in his, in his fucking twisted brain, Star Scream, like the GoBots built the Transformers. This is like nice. this is like this is like Transformers origin, but like Ren and Stimpy mode. It is. <laughs> I'm gonna just share the screen. Because, like, you guys are sitting there, and I can already tell. No one believes me. So No, I believe you. This is the same guy that brought us the uh, Omega Supreme as a stretch of road. Right. In the Cloverleaf formation. Absolutely. Let's see. Read <clears throat> GoBots Online. <clears throat> Here we go. So we're going to go next chapter. <clears throat> next chapter. Next chapter. Going to page... Five. So here we go. Page five. Go bots. Let's go full chapter. We're going to let this load. And that's the artwork that we've come to expect from Tom Scioli. It's not bad artwork. But he's yeah, he's going for looking dated. Yeah, right. So we we're going to get down here to the very end. And um, here we go. Dude, Whoa, dude. What happened to vamp? Uh, there's like hundreds of vamps, so they're kind of like vehicons. And uh, uh, yeah, I remember the vamp toy. That was a weird looking. That was a weird looking figure. That was. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see here. The rock lords are I... in here. Oh yeah. Uh. You know, I didn't. I, I didn't me? learn it. I didn't learn until recently that there was actually a, a Super GoBots vamp. I, there it is. That was yep. new to me. When do we start? Right now I'm creating an heir. A son, like me, but better. An optimized <laughs> version of myself. I recommend you do it too. And then there's Bug Bite with Bumblebee's head in there. Maybe I will. What about these <laughs> two? Regeneration, there's Psycho and Leader One. I've given it a lot of thought. Oh, with the body inside. Yeah. I've given it a lot of thought. These two are trouble. We can put them back together, let them stand trial, but somehow keep dragging us into their conflict. We're going to take the best parts of each and create a new GoBot. There's not much to work with here. We'll do our best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seeker jets. <laughs> yeah. Where, where does the little skeleton man fit inside Starscream? Yeah. The cockpit. <laughs> oh, Probably, my. yeah. This is... That's that's wow. the wrong answer, Artem. It's obviously the soul. Tom, you do a lot of drugs, and I applaud you. Uh <laughs> I, can just, I can just imagine sometime later on in some in some iteration of IDW, somebody finding out that there's actually a little man inside of Starscream. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grind your bones to make my aft portal cover. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That was some weirdness. There it is. Fifty nine ninety nine. Come on, come on. Go buy some. Come on. Commence to jiggling. Do it, and uh, you can download Honey and save. But fuck it, they don't do it because they're not sponsoring us. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't do it for me, Honey. Uh huh. Oh, I use Honey all the time. I, I save so much money with Honey. Oh, must be nice. Now, screaming face one last time. There you go. Yeah, Goodbye. There we, there it is. Oh, hold on. I need to share the screen again because this is, this is honest to God. This is Thomas's and Xavier's favorite part of the show, where we read the what the fuck 
the second most what the fuck comic strip in history. The Generation Select uh, comic strips. Yeah, this is a uh, this is kitschy, huh? There's there's more. There's yeah. More. Hey, hey, Artem. There is fuck tons more. It never ends. Furman so now was we right. Got... <laughs> okay, so now now the uh, the bot bots are involved. Oh, yeah. Page one, panel one, right there by the the glue. You can see him waving to Ultra Magnus. That's them. That's fucking them. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. On Planet Honky, right? Yeah, Planet <laughs> Planet Honkatron. There we go. What do we have going on mm -hmm. here on page uh, page two? Let's see. Uh, they're just a uh, roll call of weaponry. Sh strut your shit. Show me what you got. And you're like, I got, I got myself a talisman. It don't spin none. I got myself a golden mitt. It don't to kill half the life in the universe. The infabled big ass guns. The fabled infinity BFG. Uh huh. <laughs> or it will be as soon as it powers up. <laughs> Next page, page three. <sighs> uh, let's see. I see a Straxus, so it's always you know a good day in Scott's world whenever we have a Straxus. Matrix Buster, right there, middle panel, and then the guy going good. Uh, straight up translation. We we actually, uh, by the way, we saw that third party uh, Matrix Buster gun hit TF Source. Looking like it's only going to be twenty seven bucks. Not bad. And here it is, represented as a blue beam of light. Walk towards the light. Walk page, towards it. Page four. What weirdness do you see here? Uh, okay. So you know when you you see someone you don't like and you start like posturing and you go, "I'm gonna fucking whip your ass, bitch," mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it with thunder and lightning here, and you go, "Woo woo, thunder, little bit of lightning," you know that sort of thing. Okay. Hey, Pete. Hola, Pete. Yeah. Good I snuck on while you weren't looking. It's been a week. Have you finally managed to transform Capone? Mm hmm. I Capone, I transformed both pieces and I fixed Capone. So he's no oh, longer good. two pieces. Right on. Yeah, he, he was huge. He was huge. Huge. Yes. Huge. I did a review and it, it took me, by the time I edited it down, it was still over an hour. Jeez. Oh my God. And he does did an absolute. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask. Like, he does, like, crazy amounts of parts compression, right? When um, he transforms? Not. Like the, like, like, the trailer is really big, but he, like, compresses down into a robot, like, apparently really well. Well, uh, the trailer itself turns into a giant robot. So the trailer yeah. itself oh. is a robot, and then the first three inches of the trailer and the truck turn into... Okay. The... So yeah, I, I, didn't, of... I didn't know that. Um, yeah, you're thinking of uh, fans' uh, toys. Does the whole trailer yeah. turns into a Hold on. backpack? Comment. I'm going to shame yeah. you on live air. You're not subscribed to I Slip Coco Liso. Oh. Hmm. You only need to subscribe if you want to. That I don't care if you do or don't. That's you heard it you. straight from the horse's mouth. If you don't fucking subscribe, you're not a true fan. What, what? the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> do you, you have a channel, a YouTube channel? Me? Yeah. How? Dare cool. you, sir? Oh my God! Oh my God! I didn't know that. Holson's getting ready with his red murder hand. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a YouTube channel, and I've got one point two four subscribers, thousand subscribers. Yeah. So, awesome. I didn't ask for one. It took me ten years to get it, but I didn't ask. If you want to sub, sub. If you don't, and you just enjoy the videos, that's fine too. And if you don't enjoy the videos, well, there's other people on YouTube. Next month, Pete I mean, and I. Are, next month, Pete and I are going to the. Are uh, people on YouTube? No, there's not. It's just it's Pete too. What happened? <laughs> uh, look, it's it's very obvious from the the amount of high quality content we put out, but the low numbers. There's only about a hundred people on YouTube. Obviously, we are far superior than the numbers say, but there's just not enough people on this very small platform to get the, the outreach. Next you know, week, you know what's weird? Go ahead. Pete. I, is I see the numbers on 
on the the on your channel, Scott, and 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 uh, Xavier's channel. Now, Xavier's channel, I can kind of understand because he stopped uploading videos a long time ago, but still, his old videos are really entertaining. And Scott, your videos were way more entertaining than mine ever were. And I don't know how I ended up with more subscribers than y'all. Ah, that's okay. And you upload Good Morning Cybertron. I don't understand that. So, yeah, I gotta, I gotta tell my guys. Y'all need to to go over there. If you like Transformers, what are you doing just on my channel? There's so much stuff out there, including Good Morning Cybertron. Well, as as a side note into the real world, and I hate to interject a bit of reality here. If Scott and I are, as we are planning to do, branch out from YouTube. We can't be focusing on the YouTube career as much. We do have to do other projects. So he and I have been investing time in other things away from YouTube. And unfortunately, if you want to like see more stuff from us, we would love to. But however, the audience we're trying to build outside of YouTube requires more attention. Let's see. My point is y'all have been on YouTube for years. Years and years and years. And oh, years. yeah, no, I would. And you still have your chat, your, your, your videos. And I still love your videos so much. I go back and I watch them. Even if they're old content, you, you're poignant. You're hilarious. <laughs> I mean, the kill it with fire thing. Oh, yes, genius. that's right. That's that right. was that like was my a... favorite thing. That and I like the thing with you and was it Kenny? Well, with the um, Devastator versus the Megazord. That was great. Yeah, that's right. And Scott, God, your videos of... were so amazing, oh, and I, I loved you, the whole. Yeah, that's how I found you. I was on um, what was it, Mike's Toys? Mike, no, what was that? That old, the old site we used to get our toys from, before Sir Toys. Oh, uh, KOToys.com. Oh, yeah. Ko Toys. Yeah, yeah, I I saw your one. The first video I ever saw of yours was a linked video there, and I followed you back. And your videos were amazing too. They were great. I loved the humor you put into them, the whole style. Everything was great, dude. Your KO Metro yeah, yeah, no, Titan the... video, the, your KO Metro Titan video that you did was fantastic, and that's why I, I, I didn't know Pete from Adam. I just messaged Pete and I went, "Fucking love your video. Want to do a podcast?" <laughs> yeah, and I, I was like, "Sure," and I didn't know what a podcast was. I didn't yeah, know what then... a podcast was until like the day before we did one. And then watching that is what made me want to, you know, do videos like Scott when he was just like, God damn it, my thumbs, you know. <laughs> I know when he did it with the, uh, the, KO, uh, the KO Star Saber and yeah. he, sm- he squished his thumb. That was, I'm sorry, I know that, that hurt you, but that was hilarious. That's okay, so buddy. I'll take laughs, on. however. I'm not sending my gentleman. And uh, your spawn videos, as much as the hell they were for you, those things, hey, I'm sorry, you're, you're, uh, your pain was pleasurable. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, oh, I remember yeah. those. I remember now, those videos. Now now that we've reminisced like a bunch of old fogies, Artem, it's time for you to kiss our ass. What do you like most about our old videos? <laughs> You're on the spot. Uh, Come on. As, as the newest member of GMC, you better produce. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Uh, yes. <laughs> I didn't watch your old videos. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, are you gonna ever upload your old videos again? Like maybe to bit shoot? I'm. Uh, it's hard to say that word without it sounding like you're cursing. Uh, I have actually put in. I I am challenging myself. Uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of insight. I am actually challenging myself to quit my job and have something else by September. And oh. what that something else is, I haven't decided yet. But I am. You know, Xavier and I are working on this project, <clears throat> and for the first time in a little while, Xavier, it seems like we may be getting a little traction. It's mostly about, like, who will hear me out, because you have to do a lot of searching, and you go, mm-hmm. will you listen to what I have to say? And then you have to wait that uncomfortable long silence for someone to go, yes, I will, because a lot mm-hmm. of the time you hear nothing. I'm not sure what – does it have anything to do with the stuff that y'all were doing, the – the stuff you were doing before, way before, and we like when we read some of the um, yes, the line strip club, yes, the strip club, yes, the, the strip, strip club? club. I don't. Yes, it okay. is. It is what we were reading the line. The strip for. club. Yeah, the strip club. Yeah. Well, I hope that pans out. I would really like to see that take off. I still want to see your old videos, but I would like to see <clears> your <throat> your new stuff take off too. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's okay. It, yeah. In the meantime, it's all about evolving. 
In the meantime, Pete, go ahead and keep watching my old videos. I love I hearing. Love. I love the ego trip. Boy, I'm funny. Ha I'm, ha ha ha. Enough ha. talk about Tommy, us. You're funny. Let's sing about Thomas, us. Thomas, tell me how funny I am. No, Thomas has to tell me how funny I am. Thomas, you better what? Oh, I it. actually have. I actually do watch your videos. Actually. God damn I, I, right I you do. Moving you have, on. You have really good comedic timing, actually. Mm -hmm. You do. It's great. <laughs> Moving on to Looky What I Found. Thomas, do you have a Looky What I Found this week? Uh, I did. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can try and find it right real quick. You should probably go to somebody else while I try and look for it. Okay. Artem, do you have a Looky What I, I Found I this week? I do not. Damn it. Holston. I am ashamed. <laughs> do you have a Looky What I Found I this actually, week? actually, uh made something myself. I made some uh, missiles Ooh, for my scourge. Whoa. That looks nice. Look yeah. at that. Missile effects. Are yeah, those really nice. chemtrails? Yes. That is Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. They cause uh, autism in steel beams. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to post that... pictures on Facebook so you can get a closer look. Hold on. That sounds like what a Decepticon would try to do. Where did you make them from? Those look amazing. Yeah, these are made from uh, twisty ties and uh, glue and some paint. And uh, I took the actual missiles from a uh, Cybertron uh, Thundercracker. <laughs> Whenever he said actual fighter. missiles. Whenever he said actual <laughs> yeah. missiles. Who thought that like Holson had stumbled upon some unexploded World War II ordnance? In the field of Sweden. <laughs> no, I figured he just strutted himself onto a Swedish air base, walked right up to the captain, whipped his dick out, and said, I'm taking what I want. If you don't like it, talk to the boss here. Holson, Holson like, points to his eyes and goes, look at me. Zip. Now look down. I'm the captain here now. <laughs> <laughs> I found the, uh, I, I found what I was, I was, I found what I was looking for. Please. The first one, the awesome. first one is, uh, have you, I don't know if anyone's seen this before. Somebody made a, f uh, a design. I don't know if it's actually been made. I don't think it has, but somebody's made a design of a figure that transforms from a wolf into a sheep. It's called sheep and wolf. Are you screen sharing? We can't see anything. You got your icon. Up. I just sent, I, I just sent the link. Okay. Go on to okay. Facebook over the group Bear with me for a second. <laughs> I, no, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the, the hangout. Oh, okay. Uh, give me a second. Sheep and here. wolf. Boop. And PBS. We're going to the first time ever. We're going to PBS. <laughs> Sheep and wolf. Sheep and wolf. Here we go. I also I also found what looks like a what looks like a digibash of somebody. I'm gonna link it again. Of scuba as the. Uh, the, the cilia slash uh, tentacle mold for the for the new for the combiner wars mold. You remember the uh, uh, Peronicon? combiner wars Peronicon figure. Let me see here. I'm bringing it up. Bear with me for a second. Oh hey, Ooh. that's not bad. Yeah, someone, I missed the link. I think it, it's got to be a digibash, but it's a good one. I'll uh, I'll share I'll share my screen with you here. That way you don't yeah, have to go searching. I, yeah, that's a Digibash. That's a pretty good one. I don't know who it's, it's really supposed to be, if I'm honest with you, but I like the colors. I, I love the idea of Sheep and Wolf, though. Sheep that's wolf. actually pretty good. <laughs> Feels like it's a McDonald's toy, but that's actually pretty good. I like the little <laughs> cape on the sheep. <laughs> I don't it's... I don't know if that's ever been featured. Has anybody else, like, used that? I... I, I... I just found it the other day, and I was like, "That's the funniest thing I've seen in a while." Now, this... Beast Wars had a concept that was that was a lot like this. The mutants, where one animal turned into another. The mutants, yeah, yeah. They had no robot mode, just two uh, two beast, beast modes. Do you know the sad thing though? And it had a it had they were the, uh, the fusor the uh, the Beast Wars mutants were supposed to be fusors, so they were they were yes. trapped between the two modes, and each one yes. of the mutants had a little tiny robot head that just you could yes. do nothing with it was just there Con conceptually the mutants were kind of like cybernetic cronenberg creatures yeah like they were trapped mangled between two beast modes and couldn't get out and the only way they could they could expose themselves was by like physically damaging their tissue to to, to expose their face oh yeah one of them <laughs> was the uh the sound wave that ended up peeking out of the back 
Yeah. Like I just I'm just imagining these creatures just like kill me. <laughs> yeah, Soundwave's Soundwave's bot mode uh head was in his mouth. Uh and I think like there was like this weird panel where like the uh the snow owl and the polar bear it was just like this weird head on a spring. And I was just like, "Oh no." No. <laughs> <laughs> My my brother had the the one that turned from some kind of a fish into a scorpion. Yes, cool I have one. got that one too. Oh, fishinock, fishinock. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about that one. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. this red, uh, red like barracuda that turned into a scorpion. There oh, was I missed yes. that one completely. There was a gold bat that turned into a uh, an alligator. alligator. Right? That was, was that it? Right. Yeah, that was that was way. the the. That was, that was the gold plastic that, syndrome. Yeah, that, horrible. That scorpionock, or sorry, that that scorpion fish thing though, is one of the things that informed me oh, on how freaky, oh, how freak. Sorry, sorry. That's okay, buddy. <laughs> on a, on a, like, but I mean, like that 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 figure <laughs> was the thing that made me realize just how freaky the concept is, because like there's a little panel in the claw that you, where you can see his gun. His, his, his robot mode weapon is trapped inside the claw, but you can't use it without blowing up his hand. <laughs> and there was a, uh, there was uh, the owl to a polar bear, and then there was a velociraptor to, to a wolverine. Yeah, to right? a wolverine. You got it. Those were the four mutants. Wasn't the owl per owl? No, no, no. Uh, hold on here. Let me do a little research here. Pete, do you sure. have a looky what I found, Pete, by the way? Pete, what are you eating? Yeah. Sure. Well, this is my looky what I found. It's pork chops that I'm transforming into bones. Yes. Oh, snap. Those Whoa. look good. Can I have I, some? Yeah. I found them on the stove. Like, they were just sitting there. I'm like, oh, I found. Look. That's my Dude, looky what I found. My stove hasn't gotten those in yet. Like, fucking, what's up with that? Has your <laughs> yeah, stove gotten those in yet, Holson? You need to upgrade your, your, so your stove. Man, I guess it's because I don't have the stove card. Like, I haven't gotten the membership yet. Maybe. You need to get that subscription, man. I mean, it's expensive, though. I know, but it's worth it. I've been troop building ramen noodles for, like, months now. <laughs> <laughs> don't you mean <laughs> anime spaghetti? Sadly, no. These are the Chinatown Korean knockoffs. Oh, my God. Uh, Xavier. Knockoff ramen. That, that sounds awful. <laughs> Just thread. Is, isn't the local ramen knockoff ramen? <laughs> Xavier, buddy, do Couple you have a looky what I found? Uh, I posted it a few days ago after I found it. So going back a few days, it was and great timing from Pete jumping on and mentioning our channel. But uh, the abridged tapeworm of Unicron episode two. Oh my god! So that was a trip down memory lane. I was like, look what randomly appeared in my feed. So. That's already on the Facebook page, and I'm going to suggest if anyone is watching DMC on my channel, go back and just watch my old vids so you know what the hell Pete's talking about. And especially the one where I reviewed uh, Beast Wars Neo Moon. Moon. I, yeah, I still want that figure. <laughs> There's something about about a robot head coming out the, the butt. It's, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was a shock when I got it. I was like, this is made for kids? I just love yeah. the ah, kill it with fire. You, that I was always, perfect. I always thought that it was freaky that uh, that Henlad, uh, what is it? His spark crystal is in one of his testicles. So there, if if you hit him hard enough in the balls, he'll die. Well, he's a Tanuk, so he's a Tanuki or Tanuki. He's supposed to have something special down there. I think yeah, that goes and... for all of us. If you hit us hard enough in the balls, we die, <laughs> or we still <laughs> replicate. Oh my god! It's like right up. What, you've never heard of parthenogenesis via being crunched in the nuts by a boot? Oh, oh boy. I've actually been lifted off the ground by somebody kicking me down there. Jesus. About six inches. Jesus Christ. And I walked it off like it was nothing. And then I found a table to sit at. I put my head down. I was like, oh, my God. I think I was like 10. I... Wow. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here's my I have no look... idea how I was able to have kids. Here's my looky what I found. It's an exciting time in 3D printing. Yeah. This man, sick of you, has made an entire, this isn't an upgrade kit, this is an entire figure, IDW Rotor Storm to print. I saw somebody cool. review this. Damn. It looked great. Yeah. It looks fantastic. 
-hmm. And you're asking, does it transform? Yes. Yep. Yes, it does. This looks like an Iron Factory figure, doesn't it? Right? But you can make it any size you want, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leader-class leader rotor storm. Yes. So good. This to hey, me Artem, like what if you printed a rotor storm for your kid that was bigger than Metroplex? A Titan-class rotor storm. <laughs> First, step one, buy 3D printer. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a place for one. I'd have one right now. 3D printer, I mean, not the rotor storm. Yeah, this well, is... that too. This is absolutely amazing. This uh, this is going to be definitely one of the things they're going to print in the future. Wow. Good job, sick of you. That is impressive that as is all get out. Absolutely impressive. Very nice. Fantastic. Um, Xavier, while we have you here, do you have any uh, reinforcements from Cybertron? I won an eBay bid. Yay. Blah, 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 blah. It contains Megs and Hotlink. Nice. Which Megs? Mm-hmm. Netflix Megs. I had no choice. Oh, we have it those at my best, store. Yeah, it was the best deal for getting a Hotlink. It was either scalper price for Hotlink or scalper price for Hotlink and a Megs. Yeah. yeah. You had to do what yeah. you had to do. Understood. Mm -hmm. Understood. So, yeah. After that, all I got to do is like clean up the scraps of the Netflix line, this little subline they got going on before Wave Two launches, and get like uh, Mira Decepticon Mirage, and I think I'm good on the Netflix stuff. I don't want anything else. Right. How about you, Pete? Any reinforcements this week? No, I don't get paid till next week, so uh, no. Uh, how about you, Holson? No. Oh, nope, nothing at all. No, uh, Artem. Oh, yes. oh, oh yes. Oh, let's see it. Well, I, sh I showed pictures before because you know, finally this week we were allowed to visit our local Toys R Us that finally opened up after months of being closed. Uh, shut the fuck up about Toys R Us, Artem. I swear to God, <laughs> doesn't bother me any. I was a KB person myself, so you know, I just have to break you know, into but... the empty Toys R Us and masturbate in the Transformers aisle. Yeah. <laughs> So I walked in. I remember that day. <laughs> so I walked in and walked on a peg just hanging by itself, you know. Radbat and uh, Rumble pack just hanging out there. Nice. Neat. Fo followed yeah. by uh, Bot Bots, two, uh, Series 4, uh, those claw machine packs. Already on. Whoa, those are. Already on liquidation. So I was like, uh, okay. My kid's a big fan of uh, Bot Bots, so. Just pick those up for him. Oh shoot, we didn't finish the comic. <laughs> I don't care. Oh well. <laughs> and then I, and I got my got my KO uh, Ooh. drop kick. Nice. Hey. I'm gonna that order. Good. I'm gonna order two of those uh, on Friday because I want to make two customs. I want to make uh, Swift from IDW, and I want to make Bayonet from uh, from also from IDW. Honestly, oh. I was so glad I waited because I was gonna buy this because I'm a, I'm a sucker for helicopters transforming, mm -hmm. and just I said you know I don't I didn't want to buy the actual original one just because I was thought it was too tiny, so when I got this in my hands it is just it's perfect, it's die cast and just perfection. There's nothing negative I can say about it. Is there a little scaly man in the cockpit? <laughs> no, but you can see his little head right there. The actual dropkick's head just sitting there. Hey, buddy! <laughs> Bayonet. Now, that that was uh, that was from that zombie crossover, right? That, yes. Yes. Wasn't it? Bayonet and, was and the, a... the last thing... Oh, go ahead, Artem. And the last thing, I, which I didn't show last time I was here, was the my little microscopic metro. I mean, uh... Oh, yeah, Aww. the one from eBay. The Century. I want one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I keep forgetting I about it, though. I have a big order coming from uh, BBTS, but it's been uh, almost four weeks now that I've uh, sh it's been shipped to me. Yeah, I, yeah. my uh, Capone took almost two. Like it went from where it was coming from. For it went to Woodbridge, New Jersey. Then it went to New York for some reason. And then it came back to New Jersey, and then it made three stops before it got to my house. And then they they were like, "Oh, we're gonna give it to the." It was coming through FedEx, and they were like, 
oh, we're giving it to uh, the USPS, the Postal Service, to deliver it. I'm like, oh, crap. They got to make their money, man. It's just like, are you guys hurting for delivery money? Here, take this and ship it to your shipping center. Oh, I don't understand. It went like in a circle. I didn't understand that. The, the, the last update I have is a May 2030 cleared customs. That's all I have. So, Dude, you are lucky. I ordered some props off of eBay that are coming from Japan for uh, a skit for Cal Exit that I want to have filmed. So I was like, I have this idea for Cal Exit, and I want to get the props for it. So I looked online, and I found some stuff on eBay, and I was like, this is perfect for the scene I want to shoot. So that way we have like proof of concept when we show it around and shop it. And then it is still sitting in Japan to this day because the limited number of packages they are allowed to ship has stopped my package from even leaving Japan. I have That's been crazy. waiting. Three months later. I have been waiting for Wild Hunter since April 17th. Scott knows my pain. Yeah. This came, this took less time to ship to me from China from Show Z than the freaking BBTS order. I don't get it. Well, China is not really concerned about your health. I know, <laughs> but. Thank God. <laughs> oh my God. Thomas, do you have any reinforcements this week? I don't have anything in hand, uh, but I am expecting the, uh, the, what is it, the reformatted drift. Mm hmm. To arrive soon. Right on. Reformatted uh, yeah. group from MMC. Yeah. The re yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm expecting that. Yeah. Once again, I'll show off my reinforcements. Uh, the doll surprise <gasps> D0C. Nice. I heard an cool. audible gasp from Pete. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I remember you showed us that uh, last week. I didn't expect it to be done already. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. painted up, done, and it's up on the Shapeways and Thingiverse stores. So free on Thingiverse. Uh, Shapeways, it's a little expensive. It was 40 bucks to, to get it out to everybody. Uh, I don't have this painted up yet, but this is from Fun Bee Studios. This is uh, from Swerve's Bar. It's his little bar bot. Yeah. Uh, still working on getting that painted. I ended up with, couldn't resist, Cyberverse Clobber. You got her. Yeah, she's a fun little figure. I like her. I like her. It's so cool I, I how seen she the, like, I seen uh, the, Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, that. that I was like, it was so. Uh, um, I, I was just like, it's so cool that she looks like. Um, oh, I forgot what his name is now. Lugnut. There you go. Mm. But it's it not not Lugnut doesn't turn into a a plane. It turns into a tank thing. Right. It's like Lugnut's sister. Yeah. yeah. Oh, grab... That's a good way to think of it. I should get one now. Yeah. You just grab her off the shelf? No, no, no. Uh, I bought a. Uh, I had to get some parts to repair my printer, and she was back ordered on Amazon. She was part of another order that I made. And I just figured it's Cyberverse. You know, I don't mind waiting until whenever. And whenever uh, they shipped the parts for my printer, they threw her in the box. Hmm. Hmm. So no, I, I seen her. I seen some reviews on that. Doesn't she kind of sort of auto morph into her tank? No, 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 no. Uh, no? The tank goes. Hold on here. I, I know that it. I know. I know that the way how the how the tank goes together is really interesting. Right. It's. Is it's, this the one with the spark armor? Sorry. Yes. Yes, it does have the. I'll, okay. I'll do the spark armor here first before I transform her. So let me pull this out. So there is the spark armor. That's worth thirty extra dollars. Not really. <laughs> um, now I'll put this back. And the tank mode—it's—it's it's a really simple tank mode. You take her pistol, you uh, lock that in here. There we go. This goes up, and then the waist goes down, and pivots like that. The face, pivot, pivot, pivot. The feet goes forward, and I'm not gonna tab everything in. I'm just gonna do like a rough transformation. Feet go like that. The arms pivot down, tab in, and they tab into Whoa, the I'm legs getting, there. And right there. I'm chug Optimus flashbacks. Yeah, it's not a bad figure. It's really not a bad figure. That's the, there you go. A I, I, speed transformation. Nice. I love, yeah, yeah. I thought that's really cool, and I love how the fins kind of throw you off. Yeah, you're like that's mm -hmm. a, that turns into a plane. Oh yeah, 
<laughs> honestly, great. honestly, it's like it surprised me because it's actually a fun little toy because it's just so easy to transform. It's nice. It's brainless. It, it's yeah. fun. And it's a new character. I'm all for new characters. Even if it's oh, kind yeah. of an yeah. homage. The second that cowboy wild rider looking guy comes around, mm -hmm. oh yes. Yeah. Bought on sight. Me too. <laughs> Honestly, I see that thing on sale, I'm going to pick it up. Here um, we go. Are you ready for this? Go. Uh oh. Dun dun. Ooh. Planet X Crypticon. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. I'm yeah. still kicking myself when I'm picking him up on the crisp during the uh, Christmas specials they had. Yeah, I got him for a really good price, so I was able to. Does pick... he come with? Go ahead. Does he come with those light, those light modules? Mm -hmm. Like, ah, oh, that's cool. I don't have them in the room with me. Otherwise, I, I'd throw them in. But I mean, he even yeah. has like his little, little nose gun. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you, you got that. But I mean, the this is like a nice hefty piece of plastic. I picked him up for I think it was two twenty. Wow. Both parts. Both yes. parts yeah. 20 So not bad. And he did is a we, nice... Did you, get him from, did you get him from BBTS? No, 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 no. I had him pre-ordered. They they have him coming on BTS. Like, they're doing a second wave of him. Uh, so I had him pre-ordered. It was like 270 on BBTS. And I had put in a... Uh, I, put in, I put in an offer on eBay to a private seller and finally like the seller declined me and then finally like three days later the seller said hey you know nobody else is biting do you want them yes yes I will <laughs> take them thank you no on Christmas because uh, I find that every Christmas around that time the BBTS has a special on Planet X that's why I picked up a few of my figures that's the actually the order I have coming in is a stuff of you know pile of loot from Christmas Man, that thing looks so good. I love the fact that it's so huge. It actually does have to come in two boxes. Yeah. 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 And each, each half has its own alt mode. Like, the top half is a spaceship. The bottom half is this weird, yeah. It kind of looks like the ghost that, that came with Peter Venkman in, mm. in the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> the one where, he, thinking, where he was with his wig? Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. The original. Uh, maybe. No, no, no. Peter Venkman came with, like, the little monkey orangutan ghost. I think I'm. I think I'm fi thinking of. Let me uh, share dance? the screen again. No, race dance came with the little swirly tailed one, I believe. Um, I'm thinking what you, they used to have this uh, ectoplasm that you could buy, and inside the can of ectoplasm was a ghost. Was a ghost, and I think there was one called the hands ghost. Ecto. I used to have the ectoplasm. So God, I used I'm, to collect. Ghostbusters. Let's see. Real Ghostbusters. I only ever had one figure from that whole line, and that was the Peter Venkman where you push his arms and his eyes would bug out. Yeah. And his that would, would yeah. drop. That, that was, was it. The cartoon effect line or something like that. Yeah. Let's see. Ghost Ecto. This is a good one. Let's see here. Ectoplasm ghosts, real Ghostbusters. Let's see here. Because he had, like, different colors of slime. So, yeah, there you can kind of see him hanging off the side. There he is. Yeah. That's what Trypticon's all, bottom half of alt mode looks like. Wow, so it's a reference to real Ghostbusters. I, Deep cut Planet it, X. The thing that bugs me, the thing that bugs me the worst is whenever you're, uh... Whenever you're fucking looking, I can't see it. Like if I wouldn't have, uh, if I wouldn't have seen like the bottom half, I wouldn't have noticed it. But I just can't stop seeing like the monster's face on his crotch there now. <laughs> <laughs> right there, it's like uh. yeah. the gun is good. The, the penis is bad. The penis is a gun. What now? <laughs> Your move, Zardoz. <laughs> So oh, they can that thing yeah. can, uh, it has its own sep it, Besides the the two alt modes, it can it has its own actual alt mode though. Right, it's it combined together. Turns into the nemesis. Awesome. Yeah. You, you have you have the um the Planet X Omega, right? Yes, I do. I I thought so. So now you got good. You got um, you got a, a foil. Yes, wow. I do. Yes, I do. God, Planet X. You know what? Weird, weird flashback. You show that off episode 100. The Planet X Omega Supreme, I think I did. 
That that's how long ago that came out was wow. almost 400 episodes ago. Scott, we're too old to be doing this shit. No, I think we're just the right age. I showed my buddy Jerome. I showed my buddy Jerome Trypticon, and he went, "Is it too late for me to start buying toys? Would it be weird?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I said, "No, no, it's not too late." Everyone yeah. should be able to do this. Just show up at a toy store dressed as a kid. You got on the tight shorts and the, the spinny beanie cap and go, greetings, fellow child. I'm here to purchase uh, collectibles and like security. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I got I to gotta say, one of my favorite like reviewers that I follow on YouTube, I love his quote that he says at the end of each video. Ah, uh, Rave9? I, I know, right? He's one of my no, favorites. No, 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 no. Emko, you ever watch him? I do. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. His I quote of... He, uh, lives, he lives in the next state from me. I think he was a Canadian, wasn't he? No, he he lives in Philadelphia. Huh. There's this whole thing about you know that the uh, you, you you start getting old, you you should stop playing because you get old, you get old because you stop playing. That, that's 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 the way I feel. You know, uh, well, that's very cool. Oddly yeah. enough, speaking of Emgo, Artem, the very year I started doing my own reviews and Emgo was trying to blow up and get as big as Pia was at the time. Uh, Emgo did sub for sub, so not to brag, but Emgo subbed to me. Oh, oh he didn't sub to me. <laughs> but that's okay. I don't do sub for subs. I never did. I never did either. I and the one time I told the kid that, he he blew up and he's like, "Why don't you sub for sub?" And I was like, "Not my thing, dude." <laughs> I have started watching finally Jobby the Hong. Jobby oh, the Hong is Jobby. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's like filthy, if Filthy Frank was one of us. Mm-hmm. He, Scott, is a, you, he, yeah. he is a talented singer. Honestly, Scott, did, did you, he's uh, the did only you, one reviewer that swears that, I'll, or any videos that actually swears I allow my kid to watch. Like, we watch it together. He loves it, and I love <laughs> it too. Scott, did you <laughs> pork an Asian woman some years ago? Because uh, I'm seeing a resemblance. Actually, you know what? Out of all out of all the the women I've slept with, like Latinas, Hispanic, you know, like straight up Mexican, Spanish women, Swedes, uh, yeah, uh, Copenhagen. Yeah, fucking black chicks, white chicks. I've never slept with a Japanese woman. I've never slept with an yeah, Asian I. woman. Me neither. Hey, I married one. There you go. <laughs> there you go. For a green card, so you can move out to Japan. And, and quite honestly, now yeah. that I'm with Ariana, I don't think I'm going to sleep with anybody else ever again. Because oh, I really oh, feel like now. this woman is the woman. And she is the woman. Good. Good. <laughs> we watched. We We're watched, pulling for you, man. Oh, I'll tell you. We watched Casablanca last night. She she'd never seen it before. She absolutely loved it. Uh, she has been making nothing but Chernobyl jokes uh, <laughs> for the past two what? weeks. Yeah. What happened? What happened to your anime education? What did she make you watch? Uh, she's not made me watch anything. Our next movie night's going to be War Dogs, because I've never seen War Dogs, and it's one of her favorite films. And then mm. we're going to watch Weird Al's UHF. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. She's, she's not seen that. I showed her, uh, today, I was telling her about UHF, and I showed her Gandhi 2 from UHF, and she fucking busted up laughing so that's that's our second movie night down down the way and yeah this this woman like is absolutely the woman for me i am i'm very much in love with ariana then after that hey, because it's a white man with a black woman you gotta watch joker with joaquin phoenix I, you know what it's it's she she explained something to me and i think joker was a fantastic film but it is an interesting thing where it's like, you know, here's Jack Nicholson's Joker, and it's like he's taken over the city from the mob bosses, and, and he's, he's going to poison everyone. And then they brought up, like, Heath Ledger's Joker, and it's like, I'm tearing down the establishment and letting chaos reign. And then it was Jared Leto's Joker, and it's like, I'm a drug dealer with Lamborghinis and the hottest woman, and I own strip clubs. And then it's Joaquin Phoenix Joker, and it was like, the man on TV hurt my feelings. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh. I think I'm the only person on the planet who did not like that movie. Uh, no, that's, no, there, there, there was a, there was a, 
there was a bunch of people who didn't like it, but they were mostly uh, critics who were just like, uh, this movie's going to cause incels to riot because they think the Joker's one of them. I, if you remember I, the controversy it stirred up. Yeah. I love yeah, this totally this good. movie, but I'm, I'll be honest with you. At first, it was really hard to get through just because, I don't know, just the, the thing with the mental illness and I don't know. And it was weird because I could identify with some of that stuff. And by the end of it, yes. I was doing the weird Joker laugh and I was like, oh, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember back in the day when we were doing the show and then he said, excuse me, I have to go kill a late night host. And we're like, all right, later. And that was a great back. part. That was my favorite part of yeah. the whole movie. Does like, that make me a bad person? Murray. No, no, it, no. It just means okay. you're, you're a fan of Robert De Niro. It's just like, you're awful, Murray. You get what you fucking deserve. Splat. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I've never seen that film yet, you know? I, I haven't watched it. It's not a oh. bad film. If you can divorce yourself and go, okay, this is this is just a film. It doesn't have to be about Bruce Wayne. It doesn't have to be about Joker. It's a good film. It almost feels like a remake of Taxi, uh, Taxi Driver with De Niro. That's what I've, been, that's what I've heard. I've yeah. heard people compare it. Yeah, it, I, I just pers- I just personally think that it's way too overhyped. Like it was, it's a good movie, but people made it too much of a you know, I, I, I have a feeling I went in with too much, too big of an expectation. That's why I was like, eh. Yeah. Um, yeah. The last, the last th- uh, thing that I saw that really my expectations went downhill. Has anybody been too watching much. this reality show about the Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah, oh yes. Jesus. I have a new episode to watch nope. actually tonight. Oh yeah. I have no it's, idea what you're talking about. It's fucking cringy as hell. There's this ranch in Utah. There is this ranch yeah. in Utah called the Skinwalker Ranch. And it is whatever you can think of that is paranormal fucking happens there. Two raccoons oh. fighting over a block of cheese? Absolutely. So it's yep. – what is it? Is it out of some, some ley line convergence or something? It's, they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> there is, like, honest to God weird stuff. There is, like, documented weird stuff. We're talking, like, UFOs, uh, men in suits with dog heads smoking cigarettes – Dinosaurs. Cattle mutilations. Cattle mutilations Bigfoot. are plenty. Uh, Bigfoot. Crop circles. Uh, floating refrigerators. Poltergeist oh. phenomena. Portals. Random, radi- random radiation. Uh, oh. Portals to different dimensions. Yes. And it's all Hold very well documented. Called? This is called, uh, I think it's called. What secrets. Is- uh, yeah. No, secrets of Skinwalker Ranch, I think. Right. So I read the book Skinwalker Ranch years and years ago. I, it was Hunt for the Skinwalker by George Knapp and Calm Kelleher. There's another documentary uh, called Hunt for the Skinwalker. It's a film documentary. Go watch that. It's fantastically done. Uh, and then it's like this show. And it's just so cringy. It is just <laughs> so, so cringy. And I know shit really happens on this ranch. Because shit's happening to people on this ranch. You don't develop like a giant knot in the back of your head for no reason. Yep. And then and then whenever you do go in, like, you're not supposed to dig on the ranch. There's this weird clause uh, that, all, that's that been handed down where you don't dig on the ranch. And, and they start digging on the ranch, and this guy's head fucking swelled up like a big old gas balloon, and he almost died. I'm just... That sounds like something from a movie. You dug on the ranch, Jim. You didn't move you the head scones, the but they didn't move the body. Um, you, you, you dug a hole. You not... <laughs> oh, But I mean, the show it sounds like a horror movie. They're, they're trying to make it as, as scary as possible. And it's just ending up cringy. There was like one episode where they went, oh, my God, there's something a thousand feet long buried under. We need to dig to find out what it is. And that's, you know, they start to dig and the guy. The guy who's like head went, so fucking see ya. I'll be. I'll be miles and miles away from this cursed land. Um, <clears throat> but they dig, and then, then, they show the, uh, then they show the mesa. There's like a mesa up above. And yeah. I'm no geologist, but Holson is. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, even though I'm not a geologist, I can see what this weird dome structure is that they're looking at. If they just would have looked at the map, they would have seen, oh, the mesa curves down and under, and what they're seeing is actually the buried edge of the mesa. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. You know, so it's radiation. And it is cringe. It's like, I don't want to dig. We should dig. I, we, we don't dig. And like the, the security, the head of security, his name is Dragon. And wait, Dragon, Dragon from Arrested Development? No, Dragon security looks like Martin a shaved Short? Sasquatch that they just found on the ranch and hired to like view stuff. So hold on here. I'm going to show you Dragon. So we're sharing <laughs> the screen right now. We're going to go. Oh, we're already in Google Images. Dragon. Uh, secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. Let's take a look at Dragon. Brace yourselves. It's not pretty. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. yeah, right there. Picture one. <laughs> His face. Mm -hmm. He looks a little bit like a gremlin. Yeah. Well, you you can tell just by looking at this photo. This is a man that believes in the flat Earth. Absolutely. And there's there's the uh, there's like Doctor Travis, who's like the head of everything. But he talks with a real thick Southern accent, and he's like like Don't dig on the ranch. I think we have to dig. A hornet's nest isn't interesting until you poke it. <laughs> what? <laughs> This, guy, this goes on a few uh, Ancient Alien episodes, too, huh? I, I, I think know him so. From. And this is the guy who bought the Skinwalker Ranch, Bryant, Fru uh, Bryant uh, Frugal, or fucking whatever his Frugal. name is. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, the, the Skinwalker Ranch, there is there is some weird stuff that goes on there. No two ways about it. It's uh, There actually is. Yeah, <laughs> there are UFOs. But the thing is, the thing is, they're also trying to to make stuff up. There was something that happened on the show, and I actually got on the phone and went, I need to figure out what this was. And oh. I, I found out, like, in Utah, I was, like, going, like, okay, wh who all has helicopters out in Utah? Because there's this scene where, like, this helicopter without markings is, is flying up above. And, and every episode, they have the date down below where it happened. So it was, like, June 2019. And I actually made a few calls, and it turns out the mysterious UFO was actually just uh, just the electrical company checking their lines. I see. <laughs> I found that out. Me. I found that out making my third phone call. I called a news, uh, a news station. I called a gas company, and then I called the electric company. The electric company, yeah, we had a we had a helicopter out there on that date. So yeah, it was just them checking the electrical lines. I mean, technically, <laughs> it would be a UFO as it was unidentified. No, it was a it was a helicopter, and they went mysterious helicopter. We're being watched, boys. Oh. <laughs> uh, Maybe they uh, dug dug through the cable. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. We were trying. That's to why you don't dig on a ranch. We were trying to find out where the electricity, why the electricity went out to half of northern Utah, because you fucking dug through a goddamn cable, you bastards. But that doesn't make That's for good TV. I know. And then what happens when you take out the the power? The the Mormon families with the one husband and seven wives start complaining, and then the husband has to talk to his seven wives for the first time after the arranged marriage about what to do about your 12 kids spinal bifida. I will say the weird dog that attacked the llamas on the ranch. That was strange. That's an actual sentence that I said that can be verified as fact. The weird dog that attacked the yeah, llamas. But can you turn it into a diorama for dull surprise? I'm working on it. <laughs> and that's, I think, where we're going to end this. Check out the new llama attack cryptid Helicopter. diorama. <laughs> From Dull Surprise, coming soon. Thank you. It turns into a helicopter. <laughs> it turns into a helicopter. Thank you so very much for sticking with us right to the end. You get a special prize. This is your butthole. This is me. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I knew you liked that. Gentlemen, say good night. Good night. Good night. Good lamb chop. Pork chop. Good Good job. Good job, guys. Good. Give me the pork chop. Give me the fuck.